We're back in Mount Lake Terrace with our show sponsor, Red Onion Burgers, and the owner, Sean Richards. Sean, I'm like a lot of people these days. I've got a busy schedule. I barely have time to find food when I'm home. And sometimes on the weekends, I don't want to go anywhere. I just want to watch football. You guys are making it easy for us with Uber Eats. Tell me a little bit about that program. It's easy to do with Uber Eats. You can get Red Onion Burgers delivered to your home. All you got to do is get on your app, order your food. It'll be delivered within 15 to 20 minutes, and voila, you're watching football. Easy enough. Enjoy food from the, uh, the comfort of your couch. Red Onion Burgers. Welcome to this week in high school sports. I'm Teresa Whipple and Steve Willits. We're into basketball. We are. We're finally going to start talking about the uh, the hardwood. Look Very excited about that. I am too. It's uh, it's getting into a full effect right now. A uh, few of our teams doing very well so far. Uh, on the boys' side of things, Mount Lake Terrace. They're off to a three and zero start. Big win over Camiac last week too. Camiac, uh, one of the favorites to win a Wesco 4A this year. Edmonds Woodway. They've picked up a couple of nice victories early on. Uh, Meadowdale finally getting their first victory of the year after their second game. Uh, they beat Cedarcrest over the weekend, and even Linwood's picked up a win, and uh, a young, scrappy team are the Royals, so uh, very nicely done. And then on the girls' side of things, uh, Edmonds Woodway, they're the team that's, uh, I don't want to call them slackers, but only one game so far, so they need to uh, they need to start playing some games. But uh, one game, uh, which was a victory, so nicely done, ladies. And uh, Linwood and Meadowdale also picking up wins so far in the season. Linwood defeating Mount Lake Terrace over the weekend. And then we've got Mount Lake Terrace to talk about, a, uh, a team that is, uh, is rebuilding, a team that seems to get a little bit better every, uh, every year. They pick up an extra win or two along the way. And so we decided to bring in not only their, uh, one of their star players, but also their first year head coach, who is a name that uh, a lot of folks in the Mount Lake Terrace community already know from his days as a player. Here's our interview we did with Tyler and Jazz. In keeping with our basketball previews, we've got the Mount Lake Terrace girls basketball team in this week, at least uh, the coach and one of the star players, uh, first year coach Tyler Straysner and Jazz Zink, who's been on the team now for uh, your fourth year, correct? And uh, I'll start off with you, coach, because you're the newbie to the group. Uh, <laughs> new to uh, to the girls' program this year, but not new to Mount Lake Terrace. Uh, former player, a graduate of the Mount Lake Terrace Hawks basketball program, and yet you've been away for a few years. Where have you been? Uh, well, First, I started off actually at Briar Terrace Middle School. Uh, I can't even remember what year that was. Uh, it wasn't too long ago though, uh, and then I was at Monroe High School. I was the JV coach over there in the boys program. I was there for three seasons, uh, had some pretty good seasons over there, and then now I'm back home at, at Terrace. It's nice to be here. And kind of a fun story too, if you wouldn't mind kind of uh, telling it again here. I know. It wasn't necessarily the job you were looking for. You uh, Did you stop by to see Coach Sood one day uh, from the boys program and uh, yeah. walk me through the rest of the process? Uh, yeah, it was a Tuesday afternoon, driving back home from work one day and past the high school and just kind of hit me that, oh, the guys are playing today. It's their summer league. And so I drive up, go into the gym, and Naylin sees me walk in and kind of looks at me and says, hey, you coaching anywhere next year? And no, not that I know of, and brought me down, saw, saw the AD, and I was hired soon after. And now you're the girls' basketball coach. Yeah, yeah. Jazz, you're a, your third basketball coach in three years, so uh, trying to get some consistency to a program, I, I've got to think, obviously, every coach has their own style of how they coach and offenses and defensive schemes that they run. Has it been a tough adjustment for you and the rest of the team to, uh, to play for another coach once again, a new system this year, or how's it been so far? I think that a lot of our coaches have been similar in the aspect of they're all hard on us, but I think the difference between um, Tyler is that it's more of a toughness to better us, and so I think that that is something that's going to help us a lot this year. And Coach uh, was a pretty darn good player in his time, too. Does, that, uh, does he try to show you guys moves out on the floor? Does he, is he more of a uh, sit back with a whistle and clipboard and tell you what to do, or is he actually no, out there playing a little he, bit? he likes to get in there and help us. <laughs> Just yesterday, he was helping with my post moves after practice, so thanks, Coach. <laughs> Speaking of which, let's talk about those post moves. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about Jazz as a player, and obviously fourth-year varsity player. Mm -hmm. uh, brings a lot of energy. We've seen her diving all over the floor the last <laughs> yes. few years. What's it like coaching her, and what does she bring to this team? Uh, man, she she brings a huge heart to the game every single day and every single practice. Uh, one of my biggest things as a coach, as Jazz can attest to, uh, everybody needs to be talking. And if there's one person that I know is going to go out there and, and talk and be excited about being there, 
is Jazz uh, every single day. She's definitely the heart and soul and leader of this team. Uh, you know, I don't think there's been a practice or a game where she doesn't hit the floor for a loose ball. Uh, and that's exactly what we need from her this year. And as long as she keeps doing that, we're going to be just fine. And Jazz, I want to talk to you about that too, because uh, as somebody who covers West Coast basketball and, and sees multiple teams throughout the course of the season, I don't think I've watched a player over the last couple of years who has given up their body and dove in over the floor as much as you do. And yet a lot of those times you're playing for a team in the past anyway that's been down by 40 or 50 points. How hard has it been for you to kind of keep that adrenaline going and, and to keep that intensity knowing that your team's out of a game? Is that just something you pride yourself in? Is it, is it just natural to you? What's, what's your mindset when you're out there on the court? Um, it's kind of just like a natural instinct to me. I think softball has a lot to do with that. Mm -hmm. cause it's like I see the ball and I die for it. It's just like what I do all the time. And I always, like, when I'm in a game, I'm not thinking of what the score is. Like, I'm just thinking, like, I want this ball, I want this possession, I want to score for my team. So that's kind of just, like, the mindset all the time is I'm just going for it all the time. I don't, I don't even think about, like, hurting my body. It doesn't even hurt until when I get home and I'm like, <laughs> wow, my body hurts now. Go through some ice packs yeah. at that point. So it doesn't matter if you're down by five or down by 50. You're, uh, you're playing the, the game the same, the same way. It's right. always the same. It's always the same. Very nice. Now, tell me a little bit about Coach. What's, uh, what's he like out there? What's it been like to have him out there, and what does he mean to this team? I think that something that is really good about Coach is that he knows when to be really hard on us and tell us, like, you know, you need to step it up. And then there's also a point in time when he is kind of, like, helping us out, like, in, like, more of a nice tone, like, hey, guys, like, I'm here for you, you know. It's not just hard all the time. There's a good balance between he's on us and he's, like, there for us, which I think is something that is really important as a coach, especially to high school girls because... You know, we're high school girls. <laughs> well, and since you brought it up, Coach, you have uh, you mentioned already you coached the boys program so, for quite a while over at Monroe. Do you coach differently with boys versus girls in terms of just uh, schemes and everything else that goes along with it? What is the difference between coaching the two? Uh, as far as the, the basketball play, yeah, it, it is different. You know, I've pretty much just scratched out all the lob plays out of my playbook. Um, but everything but that. I still think of it the same way. Uh, the the basics of the game don't change. Um, but now, as far as the the coaching goes, uh, there have been some changes there. Uh, definitely, I try to focus on for for the girls this year of letting them know that I I am here for you. When I do get upset, it's because I care, and you know I try to really emphasize that and trying to keep that good balance of, you know, if I'm going to one extreme on one side, I better be on the other also. Uh, but really that hasn't changed too much with uh, coaching boys basketball either because you get down on one person enough, it's going to affect no matter who they are. Mm -hmm. uh, so really just trying to give them the, the tools to keep improving and setting that standard of we are always improving. And when we're doing it, I'm going to be a happy coach. When we're not, not going to be that happy coach. <laughs> Fair enough. And we should mention you had Colby Kyle at Monroe last year, who's six foot nine and is going to Princeton next year. Glad you took the lob plays out. I'm sure the, the girls <laughs> are appreciating that too. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned that uh, there's a balance between being positive and, and being hard when you need it to be. Uh, Jazz, for you, is this a fun group to be around? Tell me a little bit about what it's like to play with this team. I mean, obviously, you want to have those moments when everybody's ready to compete, but uh, away from the game and when there's bus trips and other activities. Is this a group and a team that's got strong camaraderie, or what's it like? Yeah, I think we've grown together a lot these past few years just with all, like, our record and everything that we've been through. We've grown really close, not only on the court, but off the court also. I think we all get along pretty good together, and, and you know, the bus rides are always fun. Mm -hmm. It's fun to come back after, and soon we're going to start doing some bondings and stuff, so it's a really good group of girls. I like all of them. Very nice. And so let's talk about the team a little bit. Coach, I'm going to have you... Tell me a little bit about the coaching staff. Uh, it mm -hmm. sounds like it's a little bit of a family affair too, right? Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, the, the thing that I bring to every single team is my aspect of we're, we are a family. You know, we are going to go through hard times, but in the end, we're there for each other. And uh, choosing my coaching staff this year, I uh, figured I should reach into my own family and uh, bring in my aunt, Stacy Milton. She's my assistant and the JV coach. And having her there, I know that she's able to give me that nudge of, hey, you know, keep, keep your head on straight. Don't lose it yet. Uh, but she's also there to give that compliment of, you know, you approach that the right way. So she, she's able to keep me in line for these girls, too. 
And you have another assistant coach as well, right? Yes, yes. Uh, the other assistant, Andy Young, uh, I mean, for all three of us, is our first year coaching together. But, I mean, him kind of stepping in to, you know, there's me. And then my aunt, he's really come in and fit fit right in just perfectly. Um, he's coaching the C team, and, you know, he's down there doing the right things. I see it every single day. And, you know, with us having a C team for the first time in a while, for those girls to have that type of coach to really get down to the bare basics is really important for them. And he's doing a really good job of it. Very nice. Let's look at some of the players on the varsity team. Uh, four seniors, I believe, this year. Jazz, you're one of them. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the other three players, one of which had 26 points, I believe, against Linwood over the weekend. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about Anika Knuckles and uh, what she's bringing to the squad. So Anika and I have known each other since preschool, so that's like my best friend. And um, she did really good last night. She had 26 points, and I think that we work together really good just because we've known each other for so long, and, you know, when she starts to get a little hot, I'm like, hey, relax. You know, we just, like, we work really good with each other. And I also think that she's a really good aspect to the team just because she knows when to be serious, but she still is really carefree and funny. And sometimes, like, when it's an intense game, we kind of need that just, like, to be uplifted a little bit, and she'll, like, crack a joke, and it's like, oh, yeah, you know, we're playing basketball. This is fun. It's not just serious all the time. So that's nice. And the other two seniors? Yeah, we have Skylar and Reagan. And Skylar is new this year to the basketball program, and it's really nice to play with her and kind of like be leaders together. Mm -hmm. I think that we have like a big aspect to this team, and it's nice to have another person who can help bring up the ball. So I think that's something that helps us a lot. And Reagan's just a good time. She's funny and she jokes all the time, and we all love her. We like to mess around with her a lot. Very nice. <laughs> and now, as far as some of the underclassmen, uh, who are some of the other players on this team? Are the key uh, key players that we're going to be looking at when we watch a, a terrace game this year, Tyler? Yeah, uh, actually, somebody who's in these first three games, uh, she wasn't around during the summer, and so I really haven't had a time to really look at how she plays. Uh, but Kira Scott, man, she is amazing. Uh, somehow she finds her way into every single play. Defensively, she is a terror. I would, I'm just happy she's on our team, <laughs> you know? Uh, having to go against her would, would be a tough time. And she's, I mean, our game last night, she, she proved that she really belongs at this level and she's just a sophomore this year. Mm -hmm. So her future in basketball could be pretty bright. And I would imagine from watching this team last year, Nohea Morrison, when she's back out there, that's going to be another huge player for you, right? What does Nohea bring to this team? She shoots, and she shoots good. Mm -hmm. And she has really good ball handling, and she knows how to deal with pressure. So it's just nice because not all of us have the most experience. You know, some of us, like Kira and I, are just playing school ball. So it's nice to have, like, Nohea and Inika and players that play AAU that know how to handle certain situations where we don't. So we can kind of just pick each other up there because... Kira and I are more of just like aggressive players and we balance each other out good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very nice. So the season already is underway and we've got a picture we're going to put up here of, uh, of Coach right now. Coach, uh, again, playing Linwood over the weekend. Uh, you were down by seven at halftime and you ended up losing that game by a, a little more than seven. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, uh, this is a Linwood team that over the last few years has just dominated Mount Lake Terrace. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got to think in some ways, and I know watching the game, uh, thinking at halftime, this is almost a, a victory in itself. I know coaches don't ever like to necessarily reference games as being moral victories, but when you've got a young team and a team that hasn't had a lot of success, is it mm -hmm. fair to say that you do take moral victories out of a game like that and, and when you're watching this team improve? Uh, absolutely. Uh, kind of what I've been telling these girls is that we're, we're taking steps, we're making progress, and last night we proved that we are making progress. We are taking steps in the right direction. Uh, told them last night that you know, it, the scoreboard might be saying something different, but in our scorebook, the, this is a win. Uh, we showed a lot of things last night that, things that we can do really well. Uh, you know, obviously every game, there's things that we need to improve on. But just to go out there and compete the way we did, I mean, from the f first tip to the last buzzer, we, we were fighting. We were diving on the floor after loose balls. Uh, and to look at the scoreboard and be down seven at halftime against a team like Linwood, I, yeah, I kind of looked up there with a little smile on my face. It was, it was a good time last night. Very good. And then Jazz, and we want to put a picture of you up also from over the weekend. A uh, little bit of a rough way to start the, the season off. You play Oak Harbor up in Oak Harbor in overtime. You have to come back the very next night and play Squalicum at home. 
Oak Harbor's not exactly right down the street, and when you play an overtime game with them at that on a weekday, what time did you guys get home? What, what time did the bus arrive at the school? We got home at like 12 a.m. <laughs> so you get home yeah. at 12 a.m. and you got to play the very next night. And by the way, you have to be students still, right? You have to go yeah. to school. Uh, notice that you have another trip like that coming up this week. You play at Sea Home on Tuesday, and then you come home for uh, Cascade on Wednesday. D does this team enjoy the bus rides? Do you guys manage to uh, to pass time? And what's yeah, that like? Yeah, we like to listen to a lot of music, and we have like a dance party. That's mostly we try to do that <laughs> on the way home, just because you know. We're all kind of getting in our own zones mm -hmm. onto the game because we're like, this is a business trip and we're going to go win this game and then we'll celebrate after. So it's fun though. It's still, you know, we know how to make it fun even when we're getting prepared to have a tough game. So who gets to choose the music? You guys or the, the players or the coaches? The players. players. Definitely. Okay. Coach, you're okay with that? <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, he likes our music. <laughs> me, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not like too much older than they are. Uh, still listening to the most of the same music as them. Uh, but really, me as a player, that's that's their time. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I had my own way of getting ready for games, and I respect theirs. Uh, as you know, as long as they're staying focused on the game, I'm happy about it. Very nice. So we mentioned again Wednesday night, uh, folks can get out to uh, the Terrace CM at Valley Terrace High School and watch them play Cascade. Uh, a couple other games I wanted to make note of. You've got the big holiday tournament coming up, uh, which is always uh, at Valley Terrace High School. You have an 11 a.m. game the day after Christmas against Mariner, and then the very next day you play Zilla at 2.30. Uh, Christmas, uh, the next morning at 11 a.m., Coach, are you uh, <laughs> you worried about the ladies being ready for that? or? Uh, no, not really. Uh, you know, we're, we're always showing up to take care of business. Uh, you know, just because it's the day after a holiday doesn't mean that you can't go out there and play some basketball. Do you, do you like morning games, Jazz? Or? I like morning games, but I like morning games and night games that... Afternoon games are not really my favorite, but just get it out of the way. We're and you're just done. playing; it doesn't matter. It could be on Christmas morning. We're gonna play <laughs> either way. So fortunately, they're not gonna make yeah. you do that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, again, uh, off to a nice start this season. Uh, the wins are gonna come, uh, and we should mention also at 31, 32 girls turning out this year. Is that right, Coach? Yeah. And yeah. Jazz, as you know, you didn't even have a JV team last yeah. year, so it's obviously a big improvement in that itself. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, we'll I will continue to monitor the Hawks all season long. Jazz, Tyler, thank you both for coming in, and best of luck. Mm -hmm. Thank you. you. Well, speaking of Mount Lake Terrace basketball, I hear you were there to witness Kyrie <laughs> Armstead's dunk. I was not only there to witness it, I was uh, I was filling in for Vince DeMiro, who was out sick that night, so I was the public address announcer. I was also doing the broadcast for Hawks Broadcast Network, so uh, yeah, I had a front row seat for it, and it was spectacular. I don't think, uh, I think maybe one other time have I ever seen a dunk in person where a player has missed a three-point shot and followed it up and made his own dunk, and that was Michael Porter Jr. last year, who was the National Player of the Year. So uh, Kyrie in a very, uh, very esteemed company by being able to do that. And he's off to a fantastic start this year. He's yeah. got over 26 points per game in the first three games. Uh, if he keeps up what he's doing right now, he could be in contention for an All-State honor this year. He's, he's really something special to watch. That's great. Okay, well, uh, now we need to talk about wrestling. We do. Uh, they're, they're hitting the mats already. And, of course, for Edmonds, that means big-time uh, wrestling because... Coach Alfie doesn't mess around. They're always yeah. off to an invitational or matching themselves up against some of the top talent on really the West Coast, not just in the state. This particular weekend, they had everybody coming to them. It was the Edmonds Invite, 28 different schools involved, again, all top wrestling programs. And as a team, they finished in sixth place over the weekend. So uh, well done, Warriors. Thought might be, maybe it would be time to bring in a couple of those guys and to talk about not only the weekend that was, but also just the team in general. So here's an interview we did with Cole and Ellis. Winter season also means it's time to talk wrestling. And with us, two of the members of one of the uh, more premier teams in the entire state, really, the Edmonds Woodway Warriors. We've got two seniors with us, Cole Hadler and Ellis Carlson. Uh, guys, just getting started for the year, but you guys are not exactly going into it lightly. You had a big invitational over the weekend, the Edmonds Invite, 28 schools, as a team, you took sixth place, and we should also mention that, uh, Cole, you took eighth place in the 152-pound category, and for you, Ellis, uh, seventh place in the 138-pound category. So congratulations on a nice uh, you. nice weekend for you. Tell me a little bit about what it's like to, uh, to have those kind of opponents come into your building early in the season, because I know Coach Alfie never, never tends to schedule lightly, does he? What is it like for you guys, Cole, and how does it make you guys better going forward? Uh, it's great for us just to see where we're at see where we can be. Um, it's good to have tough competition. It puts us ahead of some of the other schools around us. And, and for you, Ellis, I, I've got to think that uh, 
these invitationals, when you get 28 schools and they're coming from out, all throughout the area and, and maybe sometimes outside the area, you don't always know these wrestlers either, right? What is that like for you? And when do you find out who you're going to wrestle in the first round? Uh, we find out like an hour before we wrestle, and it's it's the same for me. I wrestle every match the same. Um, I don't change how I wrestle for any particular person. We're used to talking uh, indiv or ball sports with like basketball and football where so much goes on in the world of scouting these days and exactly. huddle videos and everything else, and everybody yeah. seems to know everyone's tendencies. Mm -hmm. What about you, Cole? Do you, uh, do you like the fact that your, your opponent, a lot of times in these big invitationals, they don't know you and you don't know them? Is that kind of intriguing for you? Yeah, I like that. I like being able to surprise them with what I got. Very nice. And it seems to work because you did okay over the weekend. Yeah. As far as the uh, the team is concerned, and we look at some of these individuals who uh, who did well at the tournament, and maybe we'll kind of go over these a little bit, and you tell me uh, who some of these guys are and what they mean to this team. Uh, looking at the uh, the 106-pound category, Baylor Dinkinger, um, third place over the weekend. Not, not too bad. Yeah. Young so, guy too, right? Yeah, yeah so Baylor's a freshman. Uh, first high school tournament takes third, so that's really big for us. See a lot of potential there. Very nice. And then we've got Howie Hare, who was in sixth place in the 132. Ellis, tell me a little bit about Howie. Oh, uh, yeah. Howie's a sophomore, and him and Usman are, I mean, they're good friends and same grade and stuff, and they had to wrestle, uh, wrestle for that. But, yeah, Howie's he's got some good potential in him as well. So Usman Fateh, uh, who also, like you mentioned, was in the 132-pound category, he took seventh place. Uh, and Howie and Usman did not have to wrestle against each other in this one, is that correct? They did. They oh, did. they did wrestle yeah. against each other, okay. Is that fairly common in these invitationals, and what is that like when you have to wrestle it your is. own teammate? Uh, I can speak for myself. I wrestled Salu in the district finals last year. It's definitely, t it's, uh, it's interesting to wrestle somebody that, you know, you wrestle, you know, almost every day in practice, and to go out there and wrestle them in front of everybody, it's kind of fun, too. A little bit bittersweet at times, I would think. When you, bit, yeah. when you, and tell me about Usman though. What is uh, what kind of a wrestler is he, and what what is he like to, on the team? Uh, Usman was right there with us at regionals last year. Um, he's one of those lighter guys, so I think he can be exactly like his brothers. And one of his brothers, salute second place over the weekend at the 145 pound category. And Ellis, this wasn't an easy category this uh, at this tournament, was it? No, there was quite a few state placers. I think there was like six state placers and a couple state champs in his bracket. So it was tough for him to get there, and that's great for him. They got second. Did I hear correctly? Was was one of his competitors a uh, a state participant or a state championship participant last so year? So he in his semifinals match, he wrestled a state finalist. A state finalist and yeah. won. I won. mean, so okay, in overtime. Yeah, very nicely done. Uh, Simon Lee, he took eighth place in the one hundred and seventy pound category. What's uh, what's Simon like? Simon, he's a tough kid. He uh, he feels a little undersized at one seventy, and he's getting his weight down, so he's not going to be there for long. Um, but he, he went out there and wrestled tough. He placed eighth, so not bad at all. Yeah. Josh Brown placed sixth. He's a 195-pounder. Uh, Ellis, tell me a little bit about Josh. Yeah, Josh is a junior, and he he's one of the hardest workers on the team, and he always gives everything that he has, and he's always working to improve. And Generous Ye, who was in here last year, uh, sixth place in the 220 category. The, the big fella is still, uh, still doing nice work out there. Yeah, he had a really tough semifinals match. Uh, ended in overtime. I think he could have pulled that out and we could have seen him in the finals. So, so much uh, potential here as a team. I know uh, this is a team that finished fourth in state two years ago, finished outside the top 10 last year. When you start to look at uh, how this team is doing and how all these individuals are doing at a big invitation like this, it makes you start to think about team goals too uh, in terms of where you'd like to see this team go. Ellis, uh, how, how can this team be? How good can they be as the year progresses? Uh, I think we can be a lot better than we think we can be, uh, but you know, it's a long process and uh, it takes a lot of teamwork. It's not just one person for themselves. It's uh, we got to work as a team to get there. And Cole, you were mentioning to me off air, there's a, a goal sheet as a team too. Tell me a little bit about what, uh, yeah. what the aspirations are. So we have a wrestling retreat every year and we get together, just wrestlers, no coaches, and we sit down and we write out our goals. Uh, some of our goals, uh, we want to win the district tournament. We did that last year, so we want to do that again. Uh, we want to place top 10 at state, and we think we can really do that. And we also we want to win an academic state title as well. Good segue. I was going to ask you about that. You, uh, I should mention, are an academic state champion. You won the, was it the 132 last year? Correct, yeah. So you were the 132-pound academic state champion. And for uh, folks like me, I think that's just as, every bit as important as winning the actual state championship at, uh, at the Matt Classic. What did that mean to you as a, as a student, uh, being able to receive that award? Uh, it meant a lot. I mean, you have to wait. So your freshman and sophomore year, you're not eligible. So junior year is the first year you're eligible. So you just want to keep that GPA high, and it meant a lot. 
You know, the thing that I think many of us kind of when we're trying to draw parallels between school and wrestling, one word that I immediately think of is discipline. And I've got to think that uh, there are definitely some similarities. How is discipline something that maybe factors into your life? Because during the wrestling season, probably not always uh, a lot of extracurricular uh, or time for extracurricular activities and time to get the studies in. How do you make sure that you keep a nice balance? Yeah, so uh, when we're traveling, you bring your homework with you. You get it done in the hotel room. You know, in between matches, you could be reading a book or doing some notes, something like that. You just got to find time for it during the season. And do I understand this correctly? You weren't the only academic state champion last nope. year. We had three of them last year. And who, who are the others? Simon Lee and Jenner CA. Okay, so we'll see if, uh, if they can get it back there. And uh, perhaps a, a state championship academically for this team too. Is that another goal that you guys have? That is definitely a goal that we have, and I think it's very attainable for us. Very nice. Uh, as far as wrestling in terms of what you need to do to get ready for a season, obviously you guys have been at this for a while now. Ellis, um, d is this a team that works together a lot during the offseason? Is this a team that uh, are, are you are you getting together for workouts, whether it be on the mats or in the weight room? What is the off-season program like in terms of getting ready for a season like this? Yeah, so we have a, we do a lot of camps together. I think we do like three or four camps together as a team, and we have like 20 or more guys uh, show up to all the camps, and then uh, we have scheduled workouts, um, and we have 20 or more guys come to those as well, and then uh, we just try and get into the, the room as much as we can and kind of roll around and stuff. And, and Cole, how does that change during the season? Do you have to kind of cut back on the weight training a little bit? or A little bit. Um, we, uh, we do weight training with our coach during, during the season. It's usually once or twice a week, and we're really working on our power, trying to keep our power. In the offseason, we're trying to build strength. During the season, we're just trying to keep our power. You both made it to regionals last year. Obviously, that uh, means the obvious goal next would be to try to get to state. Uh, Ellis, how far away do you think you are? I mean, in terms of you, you got a little taste of coming close last mm -hmm. year. What do you need to do to get over that hump into a, to get to Tacoma? Um, just keep working, keep uh, keep grinding at practice, uh, working on bottom, and um, just everything. Um, yeah, we'll see where it goes from there. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. And Cole, what about you? What do you need to do to get to that next level? Um, for me, I just really want to give it all I got at these tournaments. I want to get the tough competition and really test myself. You guys have one of the better coaches in the area. Brian Alfie is very well known and respected in the wrestling community. Ellis, what does he mean to you as an individual and as a team uh, to have Coach Alfie? Uh, it means a lot. He's done a lot for our program and uh, for us as wrestlers and as people um, outside of wrestling. Uh, he's always there for you and uh, he helps you out with a lot of stuff. And for, for you, Cole, I know uh, it's not just Coach Alfie either. You, you've got other coaches that are, that are helping you guys out along the way. Correct, yeah. We have uh, a couple of uh, uh, former college wrestlers that really bring our technique up to the next level and uh, help, uh, help the practices uh, stay where they need to be. And when I look at your schedule, and uh, we mentioned it earlier, you guys are always going up against some of the, the tougher competition, not only in the state, but really the West Coast. A lot of trips for this Edmonds Woodway team. It seemed like every time we were talking about results for Edmonds Woodway last year, we were talking about going down to California and going to Oregon. I know you guys have the uh, the Rose City Championships coming up this weekend, so you're going down to Oregon. Uh, how How do you enjoy those trips? I mean, I've got to think that, you know, st sitting on a bus for a few hours takes a lot out of you, too. Ellis, do you enjoy going on those long trips? I mean, obviously, there's a, there's a payoff at the end of them. You're going to get really great competition, but at the same time, there's uh, it's got to be a little lag on the body, too, doesn't there? Yeah, there does, but we, yeah, um, they're fun. It's nice to get away and wrestle somewhere where we're not familiar so that when uh, the postseason comes up, we're used to wrestling in an unfamiliar place, and we, we learn how to adapt and uh, just kind of make it our home. Do you guys find that in some ways when you're going off to a, a trip like that, say when you go down to Oregon, that maybe the regionals, you are you've almost feel like you've, you've seen tougher competition at times maybe during the season than you do even when you get to the, uh, the postseason? Is that possible? Definitely, yeah. And as far as these trips are concerned too, Cole, is, it, uh, is there a sense of bonding when you guys are going away for hours at a time or staying overnight at different hotels? Does that bring the team closer together too? It does, and it, and it also gets us ready for state. You know, sometimes when teams go to state, it's an overnight trip, mm, and it point. could be their first overnight trip of the year, so they don't know how to handle it. They could be goofing off in the hotel rooms or, you know, whatever. We we know how to be concentrated in the hotel rooms, and you know, it's not our first experience in a in you know in the hotel and and being with each other. So it just it puts our mindset in the right place. Very good. Hey, uh, one thing that I found interesting too. Uh, 
you start to see patterns over time when you talk to multi-sport athletes and certain sports seem to kind of go hand in hand. You guys both play soccer. I don't, don't necessarily talk to a lot of wrestlers that play soccer. Tell me a little bit about that. Uh, Ellis, for you, I know, uh, I believe you play a little club soccer, is that correct? Yeah, I did. Uh, yeah, our team, we lost in the semifinals um, this year, but it really helps with cardio and uh, just another thing to keep you going and add to the workout. Do your sports ever overlap? Or are you ever doing them simultaneously, or is it pretty much yeah. one off-season to the next? Uh, they do overlap a little bit. This, uh, this year, the State Cup was moved earlier, so it doesn't overlap as much this year, but um, there's always practice and uh, stuff. Okay. Uh, and Cole, for you, you play for the school team, so yeah. uh, how does wrestling get you ready for soccer, or maybe vice versa? Uh, wrestling definitely gets me ready for soccer. Uh, I go out there for those the soccer tryouts, and there's a lot of people that definitely aren't in as good a shape as me. I'm just coming out of the postseason for wrestling, so I'm kind of in my peak shape. So now you're uh, you're both seniors this year. Uh, as soon as you're done with wrestling and soccer, time to start thinking about college. What are the uh, the aspirations? Maybe Ellis, I'll start with you. Where would you like to maybe go, and what are you looking to study? Um, I'm looking to go to either Eastern Washington University or University of uh, Colorado Colorado Springs. Um, I really like the size and location of both the schools and. Um, I like to either study exercise science or athletic training, um, and the sports medicine class with Sandy Metzger at our school has mm -hmm. she's really getting me prepared for that. Yeah, definitely a lot of uh, a lot of athletes going through that program and doing very well with it. So good for you. And then Cole, uh, we already talked about your uh, academic state championship last year. What do you want to study in college and where? Uh, I'm looking to study industrial engineering at either uh, Cal Poly San Luis Obispo or University of Washington. Okay, so neither one of these two willing to take the easy road. Good for them both. And uh, not going to be taking the easy road they're out on the, uh, the mat this year either as uh, both of them vying to do some big things. And I've already started off on the right foot. So, again, Cole, Ellis, thank you both for coming in. Uh, congratulations to uh, having some success over the weekend, and best of luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Thank you. Wrestlers have an interesting perspective on athletics. When you were in sports in high school, did you find that the wrestlers were often kind of the most disciplined of the group? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a tough question. No, they were usually the ones that were snapping towels at each other back oh, in the day. Oh, so, interesting. Uh, yeah, they were the ones that we looked at and we thought they were a little bit crazy. But uh, certainly it's a disciplined sport. You yeah. have to be to uh, to do what they do. And it's an individual sport. So really, even though you're, you're accumulating team points, when you're out there on the mat, it's one-on-one. -on -one and... Uh, yeah, it certainly takes a different degree of uh, discipline for, for them to compete at that sport. And strength, too. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. Well, we have some wrap-ups to talk about, right? We do. Uh, a few things going on later this week. We just uh, made a few notes. Swimming is, uh, is starting up this week. Uh, all four of our teams taking to the pool for the first time this year. This is the boys' swimming season. So we've got Edmonds Woodway and Met Lake Terrace. They'll be over at the Linwood Pool on Tuesday. I believe that's a 3 o'clock start time. And the very next day, Meadowdale and Linwood will be over at the Shoreline Pool swimming, also right around 3 o'clock. So uh, wishing all four of those teams the best of luck this season. And as far as basketball is concerned, uh, just wrote down the uh, the home games for the Edmonds School District teams this week. Tuesday, uh, Edmonds Woodway is hosting Cascade. This, these are the boys' games. Wednesday, Linwood is hosting Interlake. On the girls' side of things, uh, Edmonds Woodway is hosting Juanita on Monday. Linwood is hosting Mariner on Monday, and Mount Lake Terrace has a home game against the Cascade Bruins on Wednesday. And I saved uh, the other two games last, but certainly not least. It's Rubber Chicken Week coming uh. up. That's Meadowdale, Edmonds Woodway, boys and girls, doubleheader, Friday night over at Edmonds Woodway. Girls game starts at 540, boys game starts at 715. So if you are a Warrior or a Maverick, get on over to uh, EWHS and uh, root on your team. Boys and girls, stay for the doubleheader. That's right. And for those of you who've never been to a rubber chicken game, it's kind of fun. They do have a rubber chicken that they fling across the gym at halftime. And there's some points involved with where you hit the rubber chicken on the wall. and. So it's, girls it's basketball, boys ba basketball, rubber chicken flinging, you get a little bit of everything. Yep. So no matter what your sport, if that is a sport, You'll want to be there Friday night. Okay, very good. Sounds like a fun time. We'll be back next week with another report on high school sports. Have a great week, everybody.